PCI Express means Peripheral Component Interconnect Express. It is a high-speed serial computer expansion bus standard that came to replace the older PCI, PCI-X and AGP bus standards. If you're older than 25 and you're into computers since a child or maybe a teenager, you must remember the time where GPUs were actually running AGP slots instead of the PCI Express ones. Very good times. <laughs> Nowadays we have lots of things that use PCI Express like graphics cards, sound cards, wireless and Ethernet cards and even hard drives. PCI Express devices communicate via a logical connection called an interconnect or link, which is a point-to-point -point communication channel in between two PCI Express ports, allowing both to receive ordinary PCI requests or interrupts. The lanes are something that is physically on the hardware and isn't something that you can add via software, and usually the slots are different depending on the number of lanes they have. Nowadays, most motherboards and CPUs use mostly 16 lanes, apart from, for example, the APUs like the Ryzen 5 5600G that have 8 lanes dedicated to the integrated graphics. And even if you disable those same integrated graphics, the lanes will still be solely for that. So you won't be able to use more than the 8 lanes that you have left when using a discrete GPU paired with that same APU. But that's not everything, like I told you before, the lanes are physical, and the same applies to the graphics cards PCBs, which 99% of times are designed with 16 lanes, independently of their PCI Express generation. Still, AMD went a bit cocky when trying to cut some production costs, I guess, and started decreasing the PCI lanes from 16 to 8 in some lower-end GPUs. And it all started with the RX 5500 XT. Since the card wasn't that powerful, it didn't need much bandwidth and only the 4GB version suffered when using PCI Express 3 due to having to make lots of calls to refresh the VRAM data since it was always maxed out. Still, these problems were eliminated once using PCI Express 4 since 8 lanes of PCI Express 4 have the same bandwidth as 16 lanes of PCI Express 3. The problem is that AMD went even further on pushing PCI Express 4 and made cards like for example the RX 6500 XT that is ported from laptops and has only 4 PCI lanes. And if 8 PCI lanes of PCI Express 3 were already not enough, imagine having only 4. Yes, because people buying these low-end GPUs most likely have a low-end PC as well, that most likely won't have PCI Express 4. But why did AMD do this? Well, most likely because they wanted to cut some production costs, and since PCI Express 4 is widely used and PCI Express 5 is almost here, they thought people wouldn't mind. But is that really true? I personally don't think so. Today's video sponsor is GVG Mall, where using my SKG discount code leads to a 25% off across several products, making a Windows 10 serial key only $16. After the payment, you'll receive the key in your account and all you need to do is to introduce it in your Windows settings and BAM! You have an activated system. So guys, now that you actually know what PCI Express is or what PCI Express does or how it works, finally you can go to the benchmarks. Just do it! Hey shit gameplays, I'm Fabio Pisco and welcome to my channel. So once again, as you know, as for today's video, we have the test of PCI Express 3 versus PCI Express 4 on the RX 6500 XT, okay? We had one previously with the 6600 XT, okay? As you can see here, with link in the description as well. Um, and now we have the 6500 XT because instead of having only 8 lanes like the 6600 or the 6600 XT, it is a way slower GPU, but instead it has 4 lanes, which will be most likely a huge bottleneck um, even with a GPU as slow as this one, don't you think? Well, that's why I'm bringing you the benchmarks. And yeah, basically without any further delays, let's go! But sometimes, sometimes something... Today's first game is Control using the X12 and high settings which are the highest ones. This game is really bandwidth dependent and also pretty heavy, so I thought the difference in between PCI Express 3 and PCI Express 4 would be bigger, even more that, that we just have 4 lanes. So I'm pretty surprised that even at 1440p, it isn't. Still, this card fares fairly well here and we get a decent boost from PCI Express 4. Even more 
in the 1% lows. Now we have Assassin's Creed Valhalla and in this game, unlike the previous one, we have a massive performance difference. At 1080p we have higher 1% lows with PCI Express 4 than averages with PCI Express 3 and that's crazy. From 31 to 49.7 average FPS and that shows us how having only 4 PCI lanes demolishes the performance here. At 1440p the difference is still really noticeable and it is basically from a near powerpoint presentation to at least the absolute minimum of 30fps. Now with Red Dead Redemption 2 using Vulkan API and high settings. I sincerely thought the difference would be higher here and although the FPS is very welcomed since we go from 50 to almost 60 average FPS, also with higher minimums, I really thought that PCI Express 3 would perform worse. But maybe that's not the case because this game was actually made for older generation consoles that were also short in hardware resources. I mean, that's what I think. Let's move on. With God of War using high settings, things are also very interesting. At 1080p, since we do not need much more than 4GB VRAM, the performance difference is not that much at around 6% difference. But once we go to 1440p, the 6500 XT using PCI Express 3 barely run the game without a stutter every 4 seconds. But going to PCI Express 4 actually delivers us a pretty stable experience in this part of the game with around 40 average FPS which for this GPU is not that bad. Cyberpunk 2077 is another heavy title and even using only high settings, the GPU struggles to achieve 50 average FPS, being the performance at 1080p reduced only by a bit when using PCI Express 3. But when going to 1440p the difference gets higher due to higher VRAM usage. Still, nobody's gonna play this game at 1440p with a GPU like this one since even at 1080p we can't achieve proper gameplay unless at medium settings or lower. But well, people may try 1440p with FSR I guess. Anyway, you have the data, now you take your own conclusions. Landings can be a little rough. Move around a bit to make sure you didn't break anything. Now testing Call of Duty Warzone with maximum settings available, yes, you heard it right, but in this case using the orientation mission for more reliable results. Maximum settings apart from ray tracing of course. In here we can see another massive difference, PCI Express 4 1% lows are higher than the PCI Express 3 averages, which once again is insane. And even though the game wasn't stuttering at all with PCI Express 3, the difference of performance in between both is just day and night, as you can see. Very interesting results here. When testing the 6600 XT in a video I made some weeks ago, the only game with a major performance difference was Forza Horizon 5. Here we have once again a pretty big performance drop when using PCI Express 3, even more at 1440p. Overall, both scenarios play the game decently for an intro GPU in today's market, and although the difference isn't as big as in some previous games, well, it is still pretty respectable. With PCI Express 4 actually delivering a better gameplay experience, but that's pretty normal, I guess. On Resident Evil Village the difference is once again out of this world. I mean, at 1080p we get 40 average FPS running with PCI Express 3 at max settings and once using PCI Express 4 we can magically run this game at 78, which is almost double the average frame rate with almost triple FPS in the 1% lows. PCI Express 3 is in fact so bad in this game that the game would randomly close when testing it at 1440p, which is why the results are non-existent here. 
From what I've tested, PCI Express 4 is a must for this game. Getting closer to the final line, we have Horizon Zero Dawn using the usual DX12 and Ultra settings. Once again, the difference is big, not the biggest of course, but big, that's what she said. Being the biggest difference at 1080p and mostly in the 1% lows, where we had a drop to 28.3 FPS with PCI Express 3 and a good value of 49.8 with PCI Express 4, making it once again the 1% lows with PCI Express 4 higher or almost as high as the averages with PCI Express 3. That shows us once again how 4 lanes just aren't enough even for a low-end GPU like this one. Yeah. Now with Gears 5 we have a similar scenario to Control, where I thought that due to the game's demanding graphics, the difference in between both generations would be bigger. But it happens to be really small, even using ultra textures, which is quite interesting to see. Maybe this is just benchmark sided I guess, and the same doesn't apply to gameplay, but Control was a gameplay and things were like this, so I guess that's not the case. The last game presented in today's benchmarks is Rainbow Six Siege, a game that I know loves bandwidth, and that can be easily seen in the results. At 1080p the difference is nothing less than abysmal, with PCI Express 3 delivering below 100 average FPS, which is still very playable of course, but with 1% lows going as low as 39, which is quite bad for a game like this, with PCI Express 4 delivering 163 average FPS and with 10 more FPS in the 1% lows than PCI Express 3 on averages. Interestingly, once we go to 1440p the difference is small and somehow PCI Express 3 got even higher 1% lows than PCI Express 4. Pretty strange. Let's move to the conclusion. So guys, as for the conclusion, what do you think about the results? Well, when I was actually testing the GPU, the 6500 XT, I already knew that the results would be big in some games. Eight lanes, I know that eight lanes are kind of enough for most mid to low tier GPUs. It is enough because they don't have much bandwidth and in most scenarios, since they have eight gigabytes RAM, uh, the performance difference won't be much. Okay, for example, in the 6600 XT, the only difference, uh, the only really noticeable difference in between PCI Expe Express 3, sorry, and PCI Express 4 was in Forza Horizon 5. And even in that game, uh, the performance wasn't that huge, uh, uh, unlike in some games with the 6500 XT, because we had 8 lanes, and even PCI Express 3 with the card performing as well as the 6600 XT, which performs the same around the same, even better than the 5700 XT. Even in that performance level, the PCI Express 3 with only 8 lanes would be more than enough. But in this case, since we have only 4, even for a low end GPU like the 6500 XT, the performance difference is big in some games, okay? It is what it is. Now if you ask me, this makes absolutely no sense. Putting only 4 lanes and on top of that only 4 gigabytes of RAM on a GPU like this in 2022 is just fucking dumb, okay? It is dumb because I know it is ported from laptops, but I mean, I will show you later in a, in a video that's following this one uh, of the RX 580 versus the 5500 XT versus the 6500 XT where you can actually see that in some scenarios the, the RX 580 is even better. So we're talking about a GPU with less VRAM, uh, way more frequency, way better architecture and will still perform worse overall than the RX 580 and why? Because the lanes. PCI Express 3 and the lanes and even in PCI Express 4 it will perform better in some scenario, it will perform worse in some scenarios, sorry. So this GPU is a turd. If you don't find anything cheaper than this one then you just go buy it and if you have PCI Express 4, let's say at least a Ryzen 5 3600, you are fine to go, you are good to go, but if you are running a, a PC with PCI Express 3 only, damn you're gonna suffer, you're gonna suffer. Overall, this is not a bad product, and in my opinion, there are not bad products. 
there are just bad prices. And in this case, if this GPU was costing like $150, it would be a killer deal. But at 200 or even more in some scenarios, it just won't cut it. For me, it just won't cut it. You're much better just spending like 100 bucks more and getting the 6600, just way better. So, yeah. And well guys, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to hit like, subscribe and share this video because that really helps a lot. Thanks a lot for watching. Share this video if you want to help the channel and if you want to actually share my work, my results. Thank you very much. That means a lot to me and see you in the next video, guys. Ciao.